Hey there, it's Sunday morning, and I just released a video on making these, which are biscuits for joinery. And uh, I made these <laughs> because I ran out, and I didn't want to go buy any. And you know what? It was a project that was kind of on my list of things to do for quite a while. Actually, I thought of, of making them the way that I did way back, way back, before I was on YouTube. I was doing a project, me and my brother were doing this uh, school, doing the benches in the, in, uh, in the change rooms, in the gymnasium, and uh, in the corners that, you know, they go together with miters, and then I reinforced those with biscuits at the time, using my old biscuit jointer, which is not in here anymore. I bought a new one. And, uh, you know, talking back and forth while you're doing stuff, you come to a, a methodology of doing that. I had a four-inch hole saw, which I had at the time. And I said, this would be perfect. I said, I held the biscuit up to the, the inside diameter of the hole saw. And I said, this would be perfect for that. So this is like, I don't know, 20 years ago, probably, the idea occurred to me. And uh, I finally got around to uh, to doing it, <laughs> to make my my nice biscuits. And then, um, you know, the economics of this kind of thing is questionable. But I mean, from my perspective, it's a different it's a different calculation. Okay, because you can't you don't look at how much these will save you by making them and how much they cost me to make. You also have to look at how much the video makes <laughs> because that's the, the wild card factor that I have to include in my activities that the, you know, the, the ordinary hobbyist woodworker wouldn't. Okay. So like I mentioned, my, um, my bandsaw mill, my quick and dirty bandsaw mill that I made back in 2016 and I put the video on my main channel and I talked about how well it was doing. Well, it's still doing well. It's like getting it's like getting from 500 to 1,200 views per day still. And over that course of time, I could take the money that that made and buy a brand new, you know, ten thousand dollar or even more. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. Wood miser bandsaw mill, you know, the one on tracks. And have money left over to buy a bunch of blades to go with it. So, yeah, that's the economics of that kind of thing. And we'll see how the video does. I like when I put it together. I didn't think it would. It would. Uh, I didn't have. Like I'm not holding out much hope for it. I figured if I could get a decent looking thumbnail and you know a, a, a title that kind of works, then it might go. Like it might do okay, but that remains to be seen. Still early in the day. I also made dominoes, but I didn't film that. And I'm using those to assemble this project. There was a little bit of this project, kind of a preview at the end of that video. And uh, I used the biscuits in the top. I'm using the dominoes that I made from ash again in uh, the base for the legs. Uh, you know, join the legs to the aprons. Another thing that you can make that costs money Right? But like I said, I didn't film that and I didn't see the need. I mean, they're just strips of wood, the right thickness and the right width. And then they don't even need the corners around it. You can just you leave them square so they fit in there. Uh, but I just knocked the corners off with the, um, with the chamfer bit in my mini table, not table saw sled, uh, mini router table with the chamfer bit. And yeah, on every strip, and I have plenty of strips, and then you can make different sizes and all that fun stuff. And yeah, you don't have to, like, I know a lot of guys like to go out shopping. They like go to, you know, the whatever the place they buy this stuff and look through all the tools and look through all the products and, and all this stuff. I'm not really into that. I like shopping. I like buying stuff, but it has to be specific stuff. <laughs> not like buying. I don't like buying I don't like buying stuff that I can make. Uh, look around my shop. All right, if I like buying these tools, then I would be buying those tools. <laughs> my shop would be full of tools that you could buy instead it's full of stuff that I made myself. 
Anyway, let's talk about the title of this video, which is my glue test. And my, my glue test doesn't have really any data, but it is over a much longer term. I've been testing glue for 30 years, and I've been doing that by building stuff with it and <laughs> seeing what happens. And it's led to me, led me to you know, some very solid conclusions in that, and I said this before, this type of glue here, not this particular brand, don't even look at this brand, this particular type of glue, the variation between the manufacturers is not enough to be concerned with. If you're using this type of glue, you're aces. Stop worrying about it. Stop obsessing about it. And stop watching videos that pander to that obsession. Okay? The other conclusion I came to is that this stuff is amazing. All right? And I've said before, I'm not sponsored by these guys. I'm not. But you see me using this all the time for a reason and that's that it is perfectly suitable for woodworking every kind of woodworking i mean i'm standing in front of probably the biggest example i have in my shop here my workbench is almost 100 percent made with this stuff including the almost five sixteenths of an inch thick uh solid oak veneer top that's glued down to the plywood underneath is glued down with this stuff and it hasn't it hasn't popped off i mean the, actually the workbench that came before it was almost 100 percent put together with this too and i made that what you know almost 15 years ago i think and then i renewed the top i glued down pine on the top and i used this again and the shop was like really cold this is my old shop. I didn't have any heat in there. I think I had a kerosene heater. I was trying to, you know, get enough heat in there to get it up above freezing, but it was just barely. All right. And that top, well, I moved that workbench into my kitchen. <laughs> it's acting as kind of an island right now, sitting in my kitchen. And the top is still fine. 100% solid, 100% sound. And sitting on top of it is a cutting board, a butcher block, uh, cutting board it was actually the top of the butcher block table that i made i don't know maybe 15 years ago as well that's all glued together with this glue all right here's another example this piece of uh uh spruce <laughs> um, that i glued to the wall in my office and like the wall in my office is the front wall that i put plywood on that has the lines and make it look like shiplap Okay, and I painted, I painted the wall first and then I glued this thing on and then I drove some screws in as well to hold it in place. I took that off when I <laughs> put in my uh, new desk, the one, the, the, the Star Trek one, and it tore off the plywood right like it delaminated the plywood. And this is not crap plywood. This was... Uh, good quality, you know, plywood. It tore the laminations right off. And good luck getting this off of here. You know, if you think you can peel this off of your thumb, no sir, no way. So yeah, tons strong. You have to use the right stuff though. Has to be this. Don't use regular, you know, subfloor adhesive. Don't use, uh, what's the other one, liquid nails. I get comments all the time from guys saying, in the, you know, in the videos, well, ask me what I'm using. You get an answer from someone, all this liquid nails. It's not liquid nails. This is not liquid nails. This is not ordinary construction adhesive. This is polyurethane construction adhesive, and it works awesomely. I guarantee it. You can't just make stuff like that up. We destroy demons. If we were to use your list, we wouldn't be destroying demons. We'd be killing people. And we can never do that. And destroying demons is a good thing. Killing people is bad. You understand? I'm sorry, Dad. That's all right. It's okay. 